Welcome to Tradespoon. My name is Lockyer Pell. I'm CEO and founder of Tradespoon. And today I'd like to go over our weekly strategy roundtable where we talk about current market conditions. We're approaching CPI data on Wednesday. We're approaching earnings season next week, the start of the uh, Q2 earnings season. So very important data, probably more volatility uh, to come in the next few weeks. So the goal is to go over short-term support and resistance levels, the trend, are we, are we heading higher, are we heading lower, are we going to trade sideways, and what are some of the trading opportunities you see in the market? Um, for those of you who are new, welcome. If this is your first live event, do me a favor, type in first. Always want to welcome new subscribers. This is my brief bio. I was Executive Vice President and Head of Technology at Options Express from its inception through 2007. Options Express was an online broker dealer. My background is a little bit different from most, you know, recommendation trade idea services. Is that my background is technology, right? I have a master's degree in computer science, specialized in artificial intelligence. I worked for several fin fintech companies here in Chicago. Some of them went public, uh, and then I started to manage my money, right? Where a lot of the um, professionals out there are, you know, their background is, they started as traders, right? And then they kind of, and most of them don't use technology or use, you know, third-party technology. So here we have our own proprietary technology based on AI, right? Neural networks, artificial intelligence, pretty popular terms these days. And then I, you know, for, but I've been managing my own money for the past 25 years. So that's my background. Disclosures are very important. Uh, I am going to go through specific trade ideas. So it's important to understand the risk associated with trading stock and options. I encourage you to visit optionsclearing.com to understand the risk associated with trading stock and options. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not registered with FINRA nor SEC. I'm showing you what I do in my own account based on my own risk tolerance level for general education information purposes only. Please consult your financial advisor prior to making any trading decisions. All right, before we jump into trading plan, Let's talk about current market conditions. Um, looking at the spiders, end of the week, so looks like uh, pretty neutral price action, right? We maybe gave up half of the gains from last week, retained the other half of the gains. Uh, we had better than expected ADP data yesterday, right, by a large margin. And market did sell off initially, reached 437 level. Uh, today, unemployment data came in probably in line with expectations in terms of hourly wages, in terms of new, a little bit less job created that anticipated. So probably in line with expectation. And you can see market um, as of right now um, basically flat and looking for direction. So the question is, uh, and then in the rates, if you do look at the rates, uh, yesterday we had a steep rally in and this week alone. We had a steep rally in 10-year yield, right? On better than expected uh, ADP data. Uh, we are retesting year-to-date high and retesting, you know, multi-year high uh, January levels. So not that far away. Two-year yield, we've re same thing. We've retested the February highs. We've retested, uh, you know, I think the since uh, we haven't been at these levels since uh, I think 2006, 2007, right? Prior to 2008 uh, uh, recession. That's the level that so very strong move in yields. Why? Again. Uh, um, a little different shift in mindset of the traders, right? The idea that before good news were good for the market, now good news is maybe not so good for the market, right? The better than better than expected um, ADP data creates a fear now that inflation is here to stay longer. Fed is not going to pause anytime soon, and um, you know, and the rate uh, increases, and we're not going to have a rate pause, right? We, Probably based on this data, might get another rate hike in July, and maybe a more rate hike, one or maybe two rate hikes after that, depending on the data. So based on the idea that inflation is here longer and rates will stay higher for longer, we have kind of the opposite effect from the October lows, right? October of last year, when the market reached the lows and yield reached the highest level, 
we were at the bottom of the market. Now we reached the same level and we are at the top of the market, right? So a little bit different dynamic because last year we were trading on fear of inflation. Now we are trading on fear or lack of fear of recession. Uh, but the yields are at the same level and, you know, technology is the opposite. You know, since the market pullback in the March, you know, I always said that uh, higher yield is good for the market. Higher yield is good for the market. Uh, and that means that if the 10-year yield goes higher um, and five-year yield goes higher until T sells off, then technology rally. In the past few days, it was, uh, you know, dynamic is similar to October of last, to, to the uh, last year, right? Fear of recession. So when people sell in their treasury, you know, 10-year bonds, 30-year bond, five-year bonds, you know, they're also selling technology, right? That was the trade yesterday. Seems like it's similar trade today. I don't know if it's a new dynamic. I don't think so, you know, but that could be something to keep an eye on. And we did have a pretty meaningful pullback in dollar again, uh, basically not going anywhere in the past, I would say four weeks, right? Trading between one or three and a half and one or two. So no really new signal. So we have CPI data next week. Right, inflation data is important. We can see pretty large movements. Uh, market is reacting to inflation data. Just as important, or even I would say probably more important, in my opinion at least, that um, earnings season next week is also going to dictate the next move in the market. So there are two choices, right? One is continue. Market continues to go higher. Probably will determine mainly by. probably will be dictated by the earnings season, right? If the earnings are, if the CPI kind of in line with expectation, right, there's no big su surprise, you know, we don't have a huge jump, you know, in inflation data, which nobody anticipates, right? Um, then, uh, you know, all eyes on earnings and maybe we retest this trend, right? We broke through this uptrend. We broke to, spiders broke through the August high. This is a line in the sand and we're heading higher, right? 460. 450, 460. The next overhead resistance that I see would be a failed March rally in last year, right? We had a strong rebound, almost retested 52 week high, but then rally failed, right? And pulled back. So that would be the next level of overhead resistance, right? From 440, 460 plus 20 points, right? So are we going 20 points higher or are we going 20 points lower? And 420 is the next level of support. That's the year to date high prior to this breakout, right? That's the February, January highs. So minus 20 points, right? A very important exercise, right? Why is this exercise important? Because uh, it's very important to think about risk management, right? And risk management comes with position size, right? You always want to go through these positive and negative scenarios based on the time frame that you're trading you know this is probably a couple of weeks maybe a couple of months time frame right plus five percent minus five percent um you know if you're trading a couple hours couple you know days then that's range is lower if you're thinking about end of the year then this range would be higher but going through positive and negative scenario is very important to determine the position size right we've said yesterday during webinar you can make money in any market you, that means that you have to be a trader, right? To make money in the in the past two years, very hard to do it as an investor, right? It's very hard to predict AI, you know, generative AI uh, kind of resurgence, or that um, you know, Rivian and Tesla will deliver a record number of uh, uh, car sales, right? So very hard to time that and predict that so you have to kind of re be a very aggressive tactical trader that can look at these support resistance levels have an opinion and make a decision so i encourage you to go through these exercises to help you determine position size to help you right because if you're bullish and you think the market can go up five percent and you're buying on these pullbacks right you're buying on the pullback because you think earnings season will be better than expected, you need to know about stop levels, right? And I would say, you know, 420, if you're thinking about 
next couple of weeks, and then 420 is your support, right? If you think about next couple of days, well, you know, 430 is your support. Uh, and that will determine how many shares you can buy, right? If you're down 20 points, you know, then maybe on the $10,000 account, you don't want to buy more than 10 shares, right? Uh, if it's a $5,000 account, maybe no more than five shares, right? The idea of not to lose more, you know, limit your losses to two to two and a half percent of your account value. All right, so, so let's go over the scenario number one, up 20 points. You're basically saying that inflation is in check and continue to trade lower and earnings trend lower and the earnings will be at least in line or better than anticipated, right? That's scenario number one. Scenario number two, you know, earnings, uh, you know, multi we had pretty meaningful multiple expansion from the, you know, uh, October lows, right? October, January lows, December lows, pretty meaningful uh, multiple expansion and, uh, you know, uh, earnings have to justify this multiple expansion, expansion, right? It was the idea that we're not going to hit the recession and the earnings will recover. So how many of you say one? We're going higher, 5%. In the next couple of months, two, you, we're going lower in the next couple of months. One, two. All right, let's go over the drop. Two, thank you. Mark. So there are a lot of people that I only see in the um, email. So Wayne. JGW, Mark, Richard, Tom, welcome back, Wayne, Ray, E, Rob, Peter, Patrick, Martin, Kevin, Irene, Don, Claude, Carl. What do you guys think? One or two? All right, we have a couple twos, couple one. Higher only next couple weeks one to one and a half okay so half of you said one we kind of we're divided half of you said one half of you said two i'm gonna go with two i've been pretty stubborn uh, people did ask me you know vlad you've been bearish since january but the market continues going higher and higher and higher and it's true i mean i've been pretty bullish in march i did Call that this sell-off is oversold and to go along, but since May, you know, I did anticipate that at least by end of May we'll have a meaningful pullback. Instead, we had a meaningful rally, right? So completely the opposite. But again, it's a new data point, right? One way to explain this, you know, I didn't anticipate ChatGPT to become so popular and Nvidia, you know, double their revenue projections and you know, going from 300 billion dollars to a trillion dollar companies. These are blasphemous events. You can't predict them, right? But it's a new data point and you have to adjust, right? One way to adjust, say, listen, I'm going to fold and become a bull. Uh, another one is to say, okay, we're just delaying, you know, recession from instead of Q1, Q2, it'll be Q3, Q4. And those are the two camps. It's not just what, you know, if you turn on the news, if you read research report, that's probably how everybody's divided. Half of the people think we can avoid the recession. Inflation is going to continue going lower. Unemployment is going to stay low and we're trading higher. That's half of the people. The other half of the people say the opposite, basically, that the recession is unavoidable, yield inversion, and uh, you know, small caps, China, Germany, you know, struggling, and there are signs of concern, right? Leading indicators are flashing recessionary signals. We've seen all these arguments. For every bullish argument, there is a bearish argument, right? And so far, you know. Don't fight the tape, bulls are definitely in control. But I think, you know, big unknown are earnings. And my opinion that, and based on the research, based on what I've read and what I hear, that earnings will be, Q2 earnings will be worse than Q1. Okay. So I do think too, uh, how do we help? Uh, so, and you know, one of the reasons yield inversion, right? We are, Actually, it dropped the yield inversion drop. We were at 100 basis points, now we're at 87. So, we do have a meaningful drop in two year yield. 10 year yield is still, you know, holding on. But I think this yield inversion is going to continue, which is negatively going to affect 
banks, small cap stocks, crude oil is at 52 week low, all of living indicators continue to decelerate. I think, the, you know, until these trends reverse and we have, you know, normal yield curve, um, you know, market is going to be under pressure. So I am into campaign, but again, since very hard to time the market, it makes sense to be long and short. Right. One of the good things that I've done going back uh, since March that I have placed a lot of bullish positions. But for every bullish position, I always have a bearish position. Right. So that's kind of been composition. And that limits, you know, if you're wrong on the direction of the market, at least you are hedged uh, and you're limiting your some of your losses. So let's look at some of the tools that we offer at TradeSpoon. Again, a lot of them, all of them are based on artificial intelligence. Right. One of the main ones is Stock Forecast Toolbox, right? You look at the Stock Forecast Toolbox. For today, it basically says there is not a lot of momentum above 439, before unemployment data, right? It's a big event, um, and model doesn't trade on the macroeconomic data or news, it trends on price action, but unemployment data aside, it basically sees neutral trend, and that, you know, either today or in the next couple of days, we're going to retest 431, and 440 is your overhead resistance. So it's, a, it's, a, it's important data for any trader, whether you're a day trader or long-term trader. Model basically tells you, listen, market is going to have a hard time breaking through 444, 440, meaning closing this gap. I agree with the model. Um, and, uh, you know, but bulls should hold on to, the, for, to this uh, trend line, right? The 432, 431 level, which I also agree, right? Usually you do have ABC pattern. Right, you have a sell-off, consolidation, and then wave C. Right, and then you know this is probably where you want to think about you know sell, you know your sell, right? Resistance number one. And this is probably your buy signal, right? Support number uh, one. Anything in between, if we are at 438, 439, we're in the middle, right? You know, market can, you know, if it breaks this level, it will retest the highs, right? If it's unable to break above this level, you know, by end of today, by end of Monday, then probably, you know, you have a pullback, right? So those are the two outcomes. Any questions? So that's important of how you would use stock forecast toolbox. Uh, you know, beyond today, it shows neutral trend, basically saying that, you know, potentially we can get to 450, right? Go, going into the earnings season. If CPI data is better than expected, and if earnings are better than expected, as long as we are above 430, you, we could retest 450. On the other hand, if the earnings are not great, you know, we do have to keep an eye on 430 level because we will quickly retest 426. So I, so model gives you a range, expectation where, you know, if we approach 430, 426, that's your buy signal. If we approach 444, you know, 450, that's probably your sell signal, right? Because that's the range where the market is trading. And those are very important pieces of information for trader, right? Especially aggressive tactical trader. And even if you're not an aggressive tactical trader, still, the difference between 431 and 439 are 2%, right? 2% difference. So if you're buying consistently at high, you're probably overpaying. If you're consistently waiting for the market to approach predicted low, then you're consistently, uh, you know, saving, uh, you know, buying at the discount, right? And 2%, even if you can save half a percent or 1%, by just using these buy and sell signals over a long period of time, it should give you um, improve your returns significantly. So I encourage you to use this tool. Uh, some of the misconception usually, you know, people would say, "Okay, Vlad, on July 20th, you model said we can reach 449 level, right?" Then on July 20th, somebody opens the ticket and say, "Model said market is going to be at 450, but it's at." You know, 426, let's say, or vice versa, vice versa. Model is trying to predict the range where the stock is trading, and it also tries to predict the trend, right? Range, a lot of tools gives you range, ranges that you can predict, but direction, not a lot, right? So this is a good tool to show you both direction and the range where the stock is trading. 
Uh, so it would be a mistake to assume on July 20th it will be 449, right? That will depend on two things, on earnings and on CPI data. So keep in mind this, you know, we do have model grade B basically mean that, you know, 80% of the time market will close between these two numbers, right? It might go above, it might go below, but it will close below these two numbers. So that gives you a sense of support and resistance. You can always zoom out to one hour or six months, if it depends on what you're doing. Uh, six months, you know, it shows you 450 is overhead resistance. So again, if we're approaching 450, probably the market is overbought. 426, again, very strong support in the market. I would maybe, if you're still bullish, consider buying at 426. Trend is intact, strong bullish trend, basically saying that by the end of the year, we should make new highs, right? Or at least retest new highs. Same thing, you know, somebody is, you know, on December, 2023, somebody will open the ticket and say, you said six months ago, it's at 512, and we're not at 512, we're at whatever, 426. Same thing, right? This is to show you predicted trend. And if we're not gonna enter recession in Q3, Q4, then yeah, we will probably get close to 500, right? We'll probably get close to 500. If we do have a recession and employment starts jumping higher, you know, then we'll probably gravitate over, you know, 426 by the end of the year. So again, it gives you range and it gives you the current trend. So I do use this tools quite often in live trading room. Let me know if you guys have any questions. All right, so Karen, thank you about your comments on politics concern. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have a lead service. So we have different services where you can follow my trades, right? You can either follow my trades, lots portfolio, live trading room, you know, lead circle, shadow trader. This is where you actually follow my trades. Uh, if you experience trader and you're just looking for signals that's active trader weekly trader monthly trader right a lot of my positions i pick either from active trader weekly trader or monthly trader signals so elite circle you get access to everything you can look at the trader log and every day will show you some of the trades right so let's look at last seven days i uh, partially closed dropbox Right, it's a quick trade again using Active Trader and Weekly Trader. Dropbox is part of this AI, you know, optimism. Um, and model did see it in a strong uptrend. So, in the beginning of the week, I bought it for 26.55. I partially closed today for 26.90. Right, was able to capture 35 cents, so maybe one and a half percent gain close to one and a half percent gain and now looking to exit at 2740. Again, the idea of active trader, weekly trader, you hold position for a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks, right? And you trade around this, right? Usually most important question that everybody should ask and everybody should have this part of the trading plan, what should be allowed risk for any positions? In my mind, and based on the research that I've done and, you know, just doing this for long enough. I think the consensus is if you're new to trading, right? If you don't have a trading plan, you're not an experienced confident trader, you probably want to have no more than four active positions at a time with no more than two and a half percent risk per account value. So when you, why, when you enter position like Dropbox, right? You basically, well, you don't know if the stock is going to go higher or if the stock is going to go lower. Is this a true breakout or false breakout? You basically can say, listen, let, if we break below previous week low, right? If we break below 26, that would be the low since, you know, uh, end of June, right? Or you can do weekly trade, let's do weekly. Right, so it's around 25.70, right? So if we, trade below previous week low or two weeks low, then probably this breakout is false breakout, right? You can clearly see breakout. So the goal is if you buy it at 2660, 
at 2560, you do not want to be down more than $250. You want to be down only $100. So the risk should be 1%. On $10,000, it's $100. On $5,000, it's $50, right? And that should be the size. Most common mistakes, people, what, you know, from the tickets that I see, uh, sometimes I get feedback, I always buy 100 shares, right? It doesn't matter if it's 100 shares of a Dropbox or 100 shares of LQD, right? Let's say you want to be exposed to high quality debt. I always buy 100 shares. Well, you know, 100 shares of Dropbox and 100 shares of LQD, will, that means your exposure is a lot different, right? Assuming the same beta, you have three to one exposure to uh, high debt, I mean, high quality debt. Uh, and if the price is the same, let's say, what's the $26, uh, close to $26. So let's say silver, right? Or CSX, CSX is better. You know, CSX doesn't move as much as Dropbox, right? CSX up 13 basis points, Dropbox is up 80 basis points. So you cannot buy, let's say, some people would always say, I always buy $500 worth of stock. Well, that's also incorrect because Dropbox beta is probably, could be a three and CSX beta is one or you know, 0 0.5. So again, you have different exposure to different asset classes and you're risking more on different asset classes, right? So the biggest mistake if your risk is different for a different position, if you're trading Bitcoin, or if you're trading you know, AI stocks, or if you're trading electrical vehicle, you can trade anything you want, right? You can make money in bull market and bear market. That's not an issue. The issue is you should always invest and risk this. You should always risk the same amount, not invest the same amount, but you should always risk the same amount. I think that is the most important rule. This is the, the hardest rule to follow, in my opinion, and that takes time and practice to get it right right just because i'm going to tell you this today and you listen and you might agree with me that doesn't mean it's going to happen automatically it requires participation in live trading room it requires you know watching the live trading rooms and uh, you know practicing practicing you know until you get it right i'm i'm a strong believer that every single trade if you lose you know that less than one percent if on the position you're going to be down less than two and a half percent over a long period of time you will make money if your um, drawdown fluctuates, you know, in some positions you're losing half a percent, some positions you're losing 5%, you know, at some point you will be on the wrong side of the trade and then you have very large fluctuations in your portfolio value and you want to avoid that. So that's a very important concept. We, I, I do spend a lot of time, sometimes it's a little... People say, well, why do you keep saying the same thing over and over again? Well, A, we have new subscribers, so not everybody. B, we have different subscribers with different background. Um, and C is it takes times to internalize this information, you know, usually at least seven times, you know, to really have an appreciation of how to determine position size. You have to do it, you have to hear it at least seven times until you have a kind of a memory, you know, reflex and you're following these trades. So another question, usually, you know, do you only trade stocks or you only trade options? As you can see, part of the lead circle, I do both, right? Here's an example of Dropbox where I went long, right? And I'm trimming my position, that's a stock. And here's an example of small cap stocks where I, you know, sold 34, 36 call spread, which is bearish, right? So I'm bearish on banks, right? 34, 36 call spread. Here, you know, I'm trading Costco, Sometimes I trade Nike options, earnings. So you have different types of trades. They're all recorded under orders. You can see all of my positions. You can enter a phone number and receive a message every time I trade. Any questions on the lead circle or any other questions? Thank you, Kim. I will do that. Very soon, thank you, Kevin. These people are getting out this summer drawing, so they need tires. Okay, so Intel is popping. Okay, I mean, Intel has been underperforming. I'm not sure if Intel is, I mean, maybe today, 
I mean, it looks pretty bearish, right? It is up 1% today, but, you know, we made new mar marginal lows, right? We kind of four week low, red candlestick. So I would be careful with Intel. And uh, good tires, uh, people are driving. This looks better, right? Very strong rally, kind of a flat formation, usually continuation pattern. So that makes sense. You have clearly defined stop level. You know, if it drops below 1270, 1260, I would consider going, you know, closing position. But, you know, next move could be 15 or higher. A lot of it depends on earnings season. Thank you, Kevin, for sharing the ideas. Uh, any other questions? All right, so we talked about elite circle. We talked about market conditions. Trade ideas, you know, usually I looked at active trader, right? Usually, I usually have sometimes bullish ideas, sometimes bearish, depending on the model, market, you know, all driven by model. So let's say MMC, right? MMC uh, buy at 184.19 or 185.67, depending on pre-market. If you see unemployment number came out and market is down, then maybe it makes sense to wait for 184.19. If unemployment went out and better than expected and pre-market stock moving higher than 185.67, right? So insurance company. Same thing, we're looking for 1% gain, 1% stop loss, and I propose always break your position in two pieces, right? Do dollar cost average. Uh, so that's active trader for, each idea you also have stock and option ideas same thing with weekly power trader different neural network model but also gives you entry and exit level but the model makes prediction for a longer period of time right so this is an example of xlk right at what level to buy at what level to sell If you're only looking for stock ideas, then we do have robo investor. If you're only looking for spreads, some of you would like to trade spreads, then it's a premium portfolio. If you would just want to follow all my trades against either Elite Circle, where you get all of these tools, or Shadow Trader, where you just follow my trades. Any other questions? Irene, am I long on Rivian? I personally don't have the Rivian position. Uh, but, um, you know, obviously, you know, it had better than expected delivery, very large volume, strong uptrend. You probably wanted to break, have a follow through, right? If next week also above average volume, we break above 25, I think that makes sense to go long, right? But we do have earnings season, so I would just wait for the follow through. If you don't want to wait for this follow through and break above this, right? Because that's the low in May of 22, that's the low in July. And this is the breakout, you know, in December, which we only recover. So it's underperforming the entire market. It's trade similar to ARK Innovation. You know, I would say wait for at least another uh, green candlestick, then you know that more likely than not, this is the bottom, right? So can it reach 12? Yeah, if it has bad earnings, you know, it can reach 12. But, you know, it can, you know, in the next few years, it could get to 120, right? So you have limited downside and, you know, a lot more upside if you're, you know, looking beyond this year and next. <clears throat> Thank you, Irene. Uh, anyone else? Any other questions? So again, consider participating in live trading room. We have a lot of traders with different background, a lot of questions. We always discuss different stocks, you know, whether it's Rivian or some people want to invest in Delta Airline, right? Strong moves in airlines and transportation, strong moves in LA Lily, the uh, weight loss drugs, or, you know, AI, obviously everybody's talking about AI, like Pelletier and, Nvidia, right? So there are, you know, there are always themes that are popular in the current market. We always discuss: does it make sense to pursue them or wait for pullback and stuff like that? Any questions?
All right, why why does let's see who else we have? Wayne, GJW, Mark, Richard, T Rob, Peter Patrick, Martin, multiple Martins, Quan, Kevin, Irene, Genevieve, welcome back, Don, Carl. Any questions? All right, meanwhile, let's okay, let's look at other sectors this week. So I would say neutral signal for materials, right? We basically undid all the gains from last week. Home builders, similar price action, basically negated all the, the rally from last week. Metals and miners, same thing. Marginal new highs, but kind of flat. Germany looks like posted marginal new lows. So, you know, next week is extremely important, right? Is this a confirmed breakdown or are we going to dance around this 50% retracement? China, same thing, right? Engulfing red candlestick, usually considered to be a bearish price pattern. Industrials are holding on to year to date or all time high. Industrials are testing all time highs. Uh, oil, kind of not going anywhere. Oil drillers and XLE trading in the same range. Dollar, but I mean, on basically flat, right? For the past three weeks, just not going anywhere. We had a meaningful pullback in TLT, right? Retesting uh, year to date lows. Consumer staples neutral, utilities, neutral, healthcare, healthcare new lows. So healthcare is under pressure, unable to break through this downtrend, continues to pull back. Pretty bearish, I mean, neutral, neutral uh, action in small caps, right? We've retested last week, previous couple of weeks lows, retested previous couple of week highs and just trading in the range. Let's see. Consumer discretionary posted new highs, retesting August highs, right? Also facing overhead resistance. Okay. Was able to recover half of the losses from all time high to all time low. Retail has been weak, right? That's, you know, if services number is pretty strong and people are spending money on services, but they're not just, they just don't shop in the retail stores or they don't shop as much. Uh, transportation, pretty strong. Still strong action in Carnival Cruise, uh, Delta Airlines, railroads. Uh, we are testing August high, right? Facing August high. QQQ trading sideways for the past four weeks. No new signals. Semiconductors trading sideways for the past six weeks. No new signals. XLK, same thing, sideways. Um, spiders. Trading sideways for the past four weeks, banks trading sideways for the past you know, 10 weeks. So, those are the signals. Any other questions? TMO. Well, financial uh, healthcare has been under pressure in this week. Thermal Fisher also sitting at this key support. Pretty bearish price pen, right? There's a lot of Healthcare stocks that are much better than Thermo Fisher Scientific. So, I mean, if you're a swing trader and you think the support will hold and they're going to have a strong earnings in the next 20 days, I mean, it's not making new lows, right? You have a clearly defined stop level. I would probably get out even if it drops below 500. So, you might say, listen, I want to risk 5%, right? That it drops 5%, but you know, if it has good earnings, potentially it can revisit 600. Right, so you have 16 points to the downside, 90 points to the upside, but you have to have strong earnings, right? And so far, you know, TMO, the negative earnings last quarter, positive reaction quarter before that, positive reaction quarter before that, maybe a negative reaction. So, for you know, it's alternates, you know, sometimes it is positive, sometimes it's negative. Healthcare in general, I think, is kind of under pressure and it's unable to break through this level, right? And you have a sharp 
pullback continuation. So that's pretty bearish price pattern for healthcare, right? Below 200 day moving average, below 50 day moving average. I'm able to break, probably gonna retest March lows, not in not that distant future. Aggressive power trader, MMC, this is a short term trade, similar to Dropbox. Um, it did pull back, it signaled the support, it had breaking out at 182, so I would do the same thing. If we drop to 182, or you can say 50 day moving average, I'd right, be more conservative. But in any case, if you think 182 will hold, or you think 180 will hold, at that point, you do not want to be down more than 2.5%. Also keep in mind that there are earnings coming out in the you know, progressive insurance announcing earnings next week. So again, volatility will pick up. So that's how I would structure this trade. Right? I would structure this trade that you know either 180, 182 is my support, break it into two parts. Uh, and you know, 184, what 2%? You have you have 2% stop loss, right? On ten thousand dollar account, you know, I wouldn't risk more than you know $250 right so $184 $4, what is it maybe buy 30 shares now and 30 shares you know if progressive you know insurance already pulling back if they don't have a good earnings right it can potentially pull the entire sector down um, and then, you know, if it does, then you have a choice, you know, if you think that MMC is a better company and they can, you know, it's not exactly, not all insurance are the same. This is more of a broker services, right? So it could be different. Um, so then, um, you know, then you have consideration to buy the second half. But obviously it's a strong uptrend, kind of vertical move since March lows. Uh, so. A lot of people are bullish on this stuff. But it is meant to be as a short term signal. All right, any other questions? All right. Um, let me see. Let's go over some of the announcements. So we do have. Uh, concierge service or you know product specialist that uh, if you're looking for a tradespun subscription and you're looking for um, either a new subscription or you're looking for different choices we have monthly quarterly annual lifetime i encourage you to give uh, jordan a call 312-625 i'm going to type this phone number 5287 and and then just give them a call and uh, see if uh, you if, see if you want to change your subscription or add a new subscription, right? If you're doing monthly subscription and you convert to lifetime, then you could be saving thousands of dollars, right? But everybody is different. You need different subscription. Maybe you just want to trade stock. Maybe you want to trade stock and options. Maybe you want to have all services. Maybe you want to have only stock for a case toolbox. So he'll be able to explain you the sir, uh, different services that we have so please give them a call at your convenience It'd be greatly appreciated um all right any other questions All right, so maybe I'll stay for a couple more minutes, see if you guys have any questions. Other than that, um, I hope to see you at the closing bell. We do have a closing bell today, and then we'll start Monday. Next week, we're going to have CPI data, which is important. And then we do have earnings from Progressive, Delta, you know, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, BlackRock Group, and others. Any questions? BlackRock Group. Um, so definitely, you know, 
great company. They did get beat up last year uh, and in March, uh, have recovered. Staying above 200 day moving average, staying above 50 day moving average, it's an investment firm, right? One of the largest investment firms. Um, they have earnings in seven days. Again, it will depend on the earnings, right? Last earnings, positive reaction, stock rallied. Before that, stock was kind of flat, no big reaction. When it was in the bottom, October 22, very strong reaction to the upside. So a lot of it de will depend on earnings, right? Um, so it's very hard to determine. Um, I still think that market is bearish. It's probably going to have a hard time breaking through 7, 718. Probably will trade in the range between 720 and 640, right? For the next few months. So based on the earnings, it might get to close. It will get to 720, or it will get to 640, right? That just depends on earnings season in its entirety, but also specific for that group. I mean, one of the obviously major concerns is real estate, right? Corporate real estate, um, you know, retail real estate, uh, residential real estate. BlackRock Group has huge portfolio, right? Huge portfolio of these um, corporate debt and companies, you know, invest in real estate. So it's still unknown to what extent you have issues in uh, these names. Right in these investments, we already hear from, you know, San Francisco real estate, from Arizona, where, you know, there is a fire sale of these hotels or, you know, uh, retail stores, and I just, you know, I don't do bottom-up approach. I don't study in detail BlackRock Group, but I understand what their business, I understand their exposure. That's the risk, right? That's the risk. On the other hand, they could have benefited because of the distress in the uh, small banks, right? A lot of underwriting, you know, and US government, I think, uses BlackRock Group to do some of the sales that, you know, government has on their balance sheet, right? They do through BlackRock Group, and they're also benefiting from that. So it, it's, you know, it's basically it's going to be up to earnings. Nobody can really predict the outcome of the earnings, right? I'm bearish on financials in general. I'm bearish on investment firms in general. I think, you know, this yield inversion is an issue, and sooner or later we'll see more liquidity issues in some of these names. Whether it's going to happen during this earnings season or next, that's hard to predict. Any other questions? Thank you for asking. All right, if there are no other questions, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much. Enjoy time with your friends and family, and I hope to see you on closing bell today or morning bell on Monday. Thank you very much and have a great day.